be a true friend, we accept the other person as they are. And they accept you as you are. The thoughts about each other are always, what can I do to make my friend's life better? My first game, one of the guys on the other team takes a shot and I block it. And the referee called goaltending. And Red got up and went nuts. <laughs> he ran and raved so much that they, they called a technical foul on And I was thinking, the first time I had a coach that went to bat for me. After the game, I said, thanks for looking out for me. And Red says to me, uh, Russ, loyalty is a two-way street. I can't expect my players to fight for me if I won't fight for them. Basketball is a wonderful game for both the player and the fan. For the player, it offers the thrill of individual accomplishment and the rich satisfaction of being part of a well-coordinated team. When I was a rookie, I invited Red to my house for dinner. And he would never go to anybody's house for dinner, none of the players, because then all the other players think that's his favorite or something like that. But he said the only reason he went was that I might have been insulted if he said no. And so as he's leaving, he says, listen, it's the last time. Don't ever do this again. <laughs> well, if you look a little deeper than the flash and excitement of the game itself, you find the never-ending attention to details that make champions instead of just good athletes. Less than a month before the season ended my rookie year, he says to me, I want you to come to the game early. I want to talk to you about something. And so we're sitting in Boston Garden, and he says, I want to tell you something. You're the best player playing basketball. I said, I knew that. <laughs> and he says, I know you do that, but I may be the only other person that knows it. You know, he says, these guys, they don't know what you're doing. I want you to know that I know. And here's the coach saying to me, hey, man, I'm so glad you're here. That was such a comfort. The all-around play of the Celtics is too much for the Hawks to overcome. Boston down St. Louis to win the NBA's World Series for the first time and become the professional basketball champion. We've had a game in Boston Garden. And we're really sitting there arguing, holding the game up, arguing about something. The other coach, who had played center, so he's much bigger than Red, told Red to shut up and go and sit down. I said, who are you talking to? You talking to Red, the little guy? If you want to tell somebody to sit down, sit down, shut up, tell me that. We'll see what happens. Everybody's shocked because they never heard me say anything. And so after the game, Red says, hey, Russ, thanks for looking out for me. I wasn't looking out for you, Red. I don't like that guy anyway. <laughs> the red-hot Boston Celtics look almost unbeatable as they take aim on another title. Big Bill Russell, number six, is one of the men responsible for their phenomenal play. Coach Red Auerbach feels he has one of his greatest teams, and so far, they have sure looked the part. The way he used to coach me was we'd have these conversations. Like there's one time we were leading the Eastern Conference by 12 games, I think. And he says, I'm so mad at you, I could bite the head off a 10-penny nail. What? What are you mad about? He said, you're just taking it easy, just finishing out the schedule. Well, even you ain't that good. He says, you have the centers playing against you, terrorized. But if you start taking shortcuts, some of them are going to get the idea that they can play against you. And once they believe they can't play against you, they can play against you. So now what you have to do, if you want to win a championship, is you have to finish this season creating as much terror and havoc as you can possibly come up with. West all alone, look at Russell come down. And what a play by Russell! It's all over. The Boston Celtics are once again the world champions. 
Red Auerbach has his coat off because they're going to heave him in a shower. After I won my first MVP, we started the next season. And Red says, listen, Russ, tomorrow morning when we start practice, I'm going to be all over you. I'm going to be yelling and cussing and screaming. Don't pay any attention to it. You're the MVP of this league. If I can't yell at you, I can't yell at anybody. So I will be yelling at you. It's not for you. It's for the other guys. You know how they give people an unlimited budget? He went over it. <laughs> oh, I got so annoyed with him. 